You're listening to Career Homemakers. I'm Kim. If you're a homemaker looking to make your time at home more productive, fulfilling, and creative, this podcast is perfect for you. So let's get started. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about feeding your family. In fact, the next few episodes will be on this vast topic. So remember to join us for the next three episodes. Before we get started, I want to remind you of an episode that I did way back last year. It's called A Homemaker Servants, and it's in season one, episode four. I'm going to just talk about it a little bit in this episode because I just know how important our mindset is. My mindset drives what I do every day. You have quote unquote servants in your house that you may not realize you have. Your dishwasher is a servant. Your laundry is a servant. In the morning, what I do is I get my servants working. That means I load my dishwasher, get it going, and I load my laundry and get it going too. So I get those two servants going before I do anything else because I usually get lost in whatever I'm doing after that. But if I've at least got dishes going and I have a load in the laundry, then at lunchtime I can think about, oh, that's right, I have something in the laundry. I can put it in the dryer now. And as far as dishes, when we think about food again, which we think about food a lot, <laughs> we can unload the dishwasher, fill it with the lunch dishes. Those are the two perpetual things that happen, I think, daily. Like if you do a load of dishes and a load of laundry, it's just a good habit. Get those servants going. They're working. So then you can do your work. They're washing while you do the other things, whether it's errands or if it's teaching the kids or, you know, with homeschooling or if it's paperwork or paying bills or doing your housework. Get your other servants going first. So now I want to dive in today's topic, which is feeding your family. This this section that I'm going to talk about focuses on feeding the whole family. We use so much time, energy, and money for this category alone, this task alone. Yet it is an essential piece. Because of the enormity of this responsibility, we may have a love-hate relationship with it. It can be my most creative task, but sometimes I am so mentally tapped out that I can't even think of a single thing to serve my family. We may feel guilty about what we feed our family. Is it healthy enough? Will this quick and simple meal be satisfying? Can we afford to eat out as often as we do? So let's talk about the seven steps to feeding your family. Yes, seven. That's a lot, right? Providing food for our families takes a lot of thought and planning. There are seven parts to it. First, we need to secure money for food. Plan out our meals make a shopping list, go shopping, prepare the the meals, enjoy dining with our family, and finally cleaning up. That's seven. 
Acquiring money for food. That's the first thing. We got to have money, right? Groceries are a substantial financial category in anyone's budget. Our family spends about 25% of our net pay on food and toiletries, which equals about 10 hours per week. How many hours of your spouse's paycheck will you use for this budgeted expense? Our husbands work hard for their money. Honoring this work by putting effort into keeping to a budget decided upon is part of being a homemaker. Meal planning. Meal planning makes a difference in how at peace we are with our weekly dinners. It's less stressful when we sit down beforehand and figure out what we will eat each week. There are many ways to do a meal plan. In today's episode, I will share two ways homemakers can use for meal planning. First is 30 meals. Make a list of 30 meals your family likes. The concept is that if you have spaghetti once a week, everyone will get tired of it. But if you have it once a month, no one would. So discuss this with your family and list their preferred meals. A husband's idea of a meal differs from a wife's. You will want to build nutrition into the meals. You can make a summer meal list and a winter meal list because the things we eat during those seasons are very different. Making a shopping list for this is easy. For a 30 meal plan schedule, a homemaker could do all the shopping on the same day each month. First, I would go to a club store and then a discount store and come home and divide the meats. Hide the coveted foods so you have them throughout the month. During the month, an extra trip to the grocery store to get fresh produce, milk, and bread may be needed. Another benefit of a 30-day meal plan is you don't have to think about what to eat. Instead, you can look at the meal plan and see what you feel like eating based on preference and time to prepare. Also, it helps me use larger cuts of meats wisely, breaking it down into several consecutive meals so everything gets used before it goes bad. Sometimes I'd put some of the cooked meat in the freezer for an easy add-in to a meal later in the month. The other type of meal plan is daily dinner categories. Do you suffer from decision fatigue when meal planning? Or sometimes late in the day find yourself panicking about what to serve? Try having a daily dinner category. Then at least it narrows it down. So if it's sheet pan night, whatever you find in the refrigerator or freezer simply goes on the sheet pan and into the oven to be roasted. Use any category that works for your family. You can also use fish, junk food, hamburgers, vegetarian, ethnic, meatless, sheet pan, slow cooker, comfort food, barbecue, thrifty meals. The goal is to stick to the category. I can be as lazy or creative as I want within each category and even substitute takeout for that category. Below is a list that I use. Monday is bowl. Tuesday, taco. Wednesday, eat out. Thursday, pasta. Friday, pizza. Saturday, big meat. And Sunday, leftovers. Let me describe each one. Monday, serve in a bowl. So anything that's in a bowl, soup, chili, salad, stir fry, or casserole. For it to be considered bowl food, the meat, veggies, and filler, like rice, pasta, and potatoes, are all together. If you consider takeout, 
Do Chinese ramen or salads work well for bowl night? Tuesday is for tacos, but we eat anything Mexican. We live in the Southland, so Mexican food is a mainstay, and we enjoy it every week. So tacos, burritos, enchiladas, taquitos, Mexican casserole, or just go pick up tacos somewhere that has a cheap Taco Tuesday deal. Wednesday has become our eat out day. For many, this is midweek church night, so pick up something quick for the kids and have a midweek date night with your spouse, if time and finances allow. Thursday is any kind of pasta, spaghetti, squash, spiralized zucchini, or regular pasta of any kind. Add protein and a sauce. It's super simple. Friday is pizza. And now that we are older, we try to have a salad with it too. Learn to make pizza dough yourself, saving your family a ton of money over the years. Saturday is meat day. I try to make pulled pork, pot roast, roasted chicken, tri-tip, and several grilled chicken breasts or thighs for multiple meals. I will use this meat on Sunday and even try to have the leftovers as a meat protein in Monday's bowl. Sunday, I use the leftover big meat or frozen cordon bleu for the adults and chicken nuggets for the kids as my backup plan. I don't like to cook much on Sunday, so I try to make this at day as easy as possible. Shopping lists. These days there are many helpful shopping lists. I've tried many to find the ones that work best for our family. Here's a few that we've tried. Google Home or Alexa are convenient if these speakers are set up in your home. You can be in the middle of cooking with messy hands and tell Google or Alexa to add something to your shopping list. The downside is that everyone can't view the list. I had ranch dressing listed three times because three different people saw that we didn't have ranch. So that's one of the downsides, but it was awfully funny too. The good thing about this way is that lit, the list populates on your phone, so there's no list to forget when running to the store. Another kind is refrigerated posted lists. They're handy. Family members can easily add their items, such as toothpaste or their favorite chip, to the list. Everyone can see it, and you can grab it and go to the store. There's also planner lists. It's handy to have it in your planner where you can keep your meal list and calendar so that all your organizational tools are in one place. And then there's also online recipe sites that combine recipes with a list of needed ingredients. Shopping for food. Online shopping for Delivery or pickup expanded during COVID and has become a handy way to shop for staples. Each store remembers your favorite items, so the more you use them, the easier it is. We are creatures of habit and tend to buy the same things over and over. I have found that a store's app makes price comparison easier online. Online shopping also keeps me from purchasing random items. Instead, I keep to what we need with less temptation. Club shopping. Getting large sizes of items you use most means better prices and fewer trips to the store. I always have to pray that I don't overspend at these places. There are many types of grocery stores today. And so it can be hard to decide which store to go to or to shop from. 
but just think about, look over your list and think about what you need this time and make that decision. I usually pray, okay, God, where should I shop this time? And he helps me. Proverbs 31, 27 says, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Yes, feeding your family is a large category. And we've only gone through the first few of the steps to feeding your family. But this is what we're called to do, ladies. This is one of the biggest things. And it's interesting to note that when they're 18, if you keep on feeding them and you have been feeding them every day like this, they, they do grow up. They turn into adults and leave the nest at some point. <laughs> but this is the faithfulness of it. Faithfully feeding your family every day. So put a smile on your face and feed that little guy and feed that cute little girl. Okay. It's important. Today's food is important for tomorrow. May God bless you and the work of your hands. Let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I just pray for the moms out there. Help them feed their families. It is such a huge task, and it's an everyday task. And Lord, I just pray that you will give each mom the wisdom to feed their family and how to just come with come up with ideas that will bless their family. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. I'm so glad you listened today. I hope you were encouraged for you are not alone in your homemaking career. I'm your host, Kim Griffin. Thanks for listening and have a goal-oriented, creative, and satisfying week.